Hello, I'm Alex and welcome back to Spellbound Weaving and Dyeing. Today I thought it would be interesting to do a little bit of an experiment with um, our batching and processing times when it comes to dyeing cotton with Procyon dye, so fibre reactive Procyon dyes. So in the past, um, I have always tried to batch my, my fibre reactive dyes for at least around uh, 12 to 24 hours um, to make sure that that color develops really richly, really brightly, so make sure we get a really beautiful color. Um, and that's what I wanted to play around with today. So I thought it would be interesting to take four um, small skeins of cotton yarn, all the same amount. So each skein is 25 grams of yarn. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to batch them all for different times. So what I decided to do was lay them out together and dye them in exactly the same way, but batch them all for different times. So you can see here that I'm um, a skein of yarn is like a continuous loop of yarn. Um, it's tied together with choke ties. So that's I've taken the little scraps of yarn and um, threaded them through. That keeps um, your yarn a little bit neater. It stops it from tangling too much and it makes it easier to handle and um, unwind or ball your yarn up when you are finished. So you can see that I'm laying my skeins of yarn out onto some plastic here. I've got the start of each skein um, at the end here where my finger is towards the camera. And I'm going to lay all four skeins out in exactly the same way. So this yarn has been soaking in our soda ash. Um, and I'm laying it all out. I have squeezed out a fair amount of that soda ash water to make sure that uh, we really can saturate our yarn as much as possible. So you can see I'm laying my skeins out. There's four of them and they are all right next to each other. So what I wanted to do today was I wanted to paint my skeins in exactly the same way but batch them all for four different processing times. So the first skein I wanted to rinse after only one hour. The second skein I ended up rinsing after about seven and a half hours. The third skein I rinsed after 24 hours and the fourth skein I rinsed after 48 hours. So if you can imagine the amount of time each skein had to process, I, what I thought was going to happen was that the skein rinsed after one hour would really be patchy. I, I imagined it to be quite patchy. Um, a very almost not quite pastel but I imagine that the color wouldn't be as rich as vibrant and as saturated as say the skein rinsed after 24 or 48 hours I, I imagine that the skein rinsed after 48 hours would be the darkest the richest the brightest the most saturated color so um, it didn't quite I would say go to plan not that it didn't go to plan but it uh, I had some unexpected results so um, watch on because this is a really great tutorial for learning how uh, to dye weft um, if you're dyeing multiple wefts and you want them all to be exactly the same there's a really this is a really great tutorial for how to do that so um, let's get started with it okay so the three colors that we're dyeing today uh, we have our Dances with Raisins, our Maroon and our Burgundy. Now these are the three three of the colours that we used in the previous warp. I thought they would just go really harmoniously. We're also using our foam brushes today and we have our little metal bowls for dyeing. So we're going to start with the Dances with Raisins. Make sure we're giving it a really, really good mix. Popping it into our metal bowls and I'm going to be using my brushes today to make sure that we get a really precise um, really precise lines with our dye um, and also to ensure that it um, gets worked entirely through that yarn so we don't want any white spots today with our yarn that we are dyeing so we're using our brushes to soak up that dye um, and then I'm just going to start painting now when I am dyeing weft like this I like to paint um, all four skeins or all, all of my skeins at exactly the same time that just helps me keep it really really consistent now you will notice that when I am dyeing this weft the color will sort of bleed up through the yarn a little bit into the white sections don't forget that we do have us have us been soaked in our soda ash um, and we are working with liquid dye today I haven't thickened this dye at all but as long as things sort of happen consistently I'm not too worried so like I said um, as long as we're dyeing all four, all of our um, weft skeins exactly the same way, I'm not too worried about um, the end result, as long as it happens consistently across all of our yarn. Now, 
Now what I'm doing while I'm dyeing this weft is I'm going to dye um, one side completely and then I'm actually going to flip each of my skeins over um, and dye the opposite side. So you'll notice when I flip the yarn over that there are a lot of sections where the yarn hasn't been worked um, completely through and that's okay. So that's why I like to um, work my way. So I'll, you'll see that I'll dye one side completely before moving on to the next side. And I'm really just taking my time with that brush, making sure that yarn is really nice and saturated, just dabbing. You can use your fingers to work the dye in, but I like to sort of leave that to the end um, and just work it all and make sure I have no white spots all at the very end. <music> Now when you're dyeing the very ends of your skein like I am now, um, make sure that you do add a little bit of extra dye and take a little bit of extra care because it, there is a little bit more bulk there in those sort of ends of the yarn, um, you will find it, you will need it to work a little bit harder to make sure that dye goes all the way through those white spots. So here you can see I'm now taking each skein, lifting it up and turning it over. This will keep it in exactly the same spot that I dyed it last time so I know that I can keep my colours in order, I can keep um, where I dyed each spot in order um, and that just makes it so much easier. You're not going to end up with an inconsistent result when you do eventually rinse and then weave with your yarn. You can see here that I'm just checking that that dye is completely all the way through those ends of those yarn, the ends of those yarns. If you can, I would recommend also making sure that you really work that yarn, that dye underneath those choke ties. They can sometimes, especially if they're tied too tight, they can prevent the dye from getting all the way into your yarn, and you might end up with some lighter spots. So after you've finished adding all of your dye, with just your fingers, um, go through and have a look and just check for any white spots. That's what I'm doing here. And it's looking pretty good. I'm very happy with the result. That dye has just absolutely gone all the way through that yarn. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. My next step now is to take some extra plastic wrap and I'm going to wrap up each of these skeins individually. That way I can unwrap each one when it's time to rinse. Now I'm also taking some uh, masking tape and a permanent marker and I'm going to write on each one how long I've left it to batch for. One other thing that I do as I'm rinsing each skein and putting them out to dry is I'm taking one of my sandwich clips um, and labeling so that way I can tell the difference between each of my four skeins to know which one was um, the first, second, third and fourth that I rinsed. So as you can see, just wrapping it up and then I'm going to label it and put it aside to batch. Now I wanted to show you just a little clip of me rinsing one of the skeins um, just so you can get an idea of a good way to rinse them so that they don't tangle. Um, I know when I first started dyeing skeins and yarn for weft and yarn in this um, in this way I was so worried about it tangling and um, just turning into a mess and never being able to get it untangled but you really just need to be careful with it just more careful than you would be if you're rinsing um, warp chains for example those choke ties are really really useful um, 
for finding out where your skein needs to be. So as you can see, I've just got it draped over my hand and I'm letting the water really run through it, squeezing out a lot of that extra dye. Um, and it might look like I'm just being rough with it, but I'm, I've always got control of it. I, I always know where it ends, where it starts. Um, how to open it up and keep it nice and neat. And one really good trick for dyeing your warp skeins, if they do start to get a little bit tangled, is to find um, the opening and kind of snap them between your hands to sort of straighten the yarn out again. And another really good tip that I found is if your yarn does start to get a little bit tangled, you can actually put it underwater and it will make it a little bit easier to uh, to manipulate it to find where it starts, where it, how it opens up. So um, put it into like a sink of water and be really, really gentle with it because it sort of sticks to itself a little bit less when it is underwater. So that's a good tip for um, trying to recover some knotty, knotty skeins of yarn. Now because I'm only rinsing one small skein at a time, I'm just going to use a small bowl with some Synthropole detergent and I'm going to give this yarn a really nice hot soap. So here we have our completely batched and rinsed and dry skeins of yarn. So um, you can see we had a little bit of an unexpected result. Well, it was incredibly unexpected for me because <laughs> I honestly thought that we would have a completely um, diverse range of colors and um, saturation of those colors, which really quite surprised me quite a bit. Um, you can see that as I rinsed each skein, I numbered each one with a clip. And I'm not sure about you, but every single skein here looks exactly the same to me. So we have our first skein here. You can see we only batched this one for one hour. And I am just blown away at how rich and vibrant and saturated it really turned out. So, um... I honestly don't really know what to tell you. The only thing that I can really think of that might have caused all of these colors to batch at the same depth and saturation is that it is still quite warm here um, where I live in Australia. So um, we didn't have any cold temperatures. We didn't have, um, you know, cold nights or cold days. So it was probably at least in the 20s, you know, consistently in my house while, this, while each of these skeins were batching and while I was dying, which might have caused them to really um, batch quite quickly and for those colours to end up as rich and, and saturated as they did. There were a couple of spots that have shown up just a little bit lighter. You can see it at the end of skein number three, um, where the dye didn't 100% um, penetrate underneath those choke ties. Um, but overall, I'm really kind of happy but kind of disappointed uh I felt like my experiment was a little bit of a fail I was hoping to show you you know this is why it's really important to batch for as long as as long as you do but um no it's really interesting and I'm, I'm kind of excited to show you that it was sort of a fail and a success at the same time um <laughs> blown away by these colors I think that they are absolutely beautiful so I'm just unwinding my skein here I will show you all four of them laid out and you can then see where we applied the dye so I do see a little bit more variation now that they are unwound but they are all pretty much very much exactly the same but you can sort of see the lines obviously it's not perfectly laid out um, on the bench here but you can see the different lines where we applied the dye um, and how laying them out and dyeing them this way gives you a really nice consistent result for dyeing multiple skeins of weft yarn or yarn for your warp. So again the colours that we used were Dances with Raisins, Burgundy and Maroon, all from Dharma Trading. Uh, I really love the way that this yarn turned out and I cannot wait to show you what the weft and the warp look together when woven on the loom. If you have any questions or comments make sure that you leave them below and also make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I'm really excited to be bringing these to you and I hope that you enjoy them. Bye!